Welcome back to the workshop. Uh, we want to continue taking a look at section 1.2, a matching problem. We've already discussed the seven brides for seven brothers and that we can uh, determine how many ways there are to match them up uh, simply by determining how many ways there are to arrange the brothers in a list. Uh, so, but in order to get to there, we have to start off with something a little bit more basic than that, uh, trying to decide how many ways there are to do something. So if I have a couple different decisions to make, let's say I want to eat some dinner and watch Netflix. So I need to decide what I'm going to eat for dinner. I need to decide what TV show I'm going to watch. So if I have two options for dinner and three options for a TV show, how many different ways can I sit down and uh, eat some dinner and watch a TV show? Uh, so if we try to consider that really basic example, uh, let's do that right here. Say I'm right here, here and, and need to make a decision. And I can choose to eat pizza or I can choose to eat some spaghetti for dinner. Uh, and then what I can do is I can decide what show I want to watch. Now, there are a lot of good shows. Uh, so I'll let you pick out your three favorite shows. But once I've chosen a dinner, then I can choose uh, one of my three shows that I want to watch. One, two, three shows that I could watch. So I could choose uh, pizza show one, pizza show two, pizza show three, or spaghetti show one, spaghetti show two, spaghetti show three. And I can see that there are one, two, three, four, five, six ways to do that. So what we've made here is we've made a, a tree diagram, essentially, is, is what they're frequently called. And it's uh, showing us our different possible combinations of things, right? What dinner am I choosing? What show am I choosing? And the combinations of them. But what happens is you'll notice that there are two choices here and then it splits each of those split into three things. So we end up with, for each one of those, we have this many uh, of these and two times three gives us our six options or, or our six possible uh, collections of decisions to be made. So if I generalize that a little bit, let's say I have a procedure in which there are K steps or K decisions instead of two, K, 13, 52, whatever it happens to be. And suppose that the first step can be performed in N one ways. So two decisions for the food. And then for N two, the second uh, step can be performed in, uh, yeah, the second step can be performed in three ways. So N two is three. So the second step can be performed in three ways. Uh, and right, no matter what I chose for the next one, uh, uh, say it's always independent of that. So the ith step uh, can always be performed in n sub i ways. Then the number of different ways in which the entire procedure can be done, right? Uh, the way I can make my decisions is n1 times n2 times n3 times all the way up to how many decisions need to be made or steps need to be done, k of them, n sub k. So this is, right, this is a theorem. The multiplication principle is uh, we want to see that played out a, a couple of different times. So uh, Tim's Dine and Dish offers four appetizers, seven entrees, and three desserts. How many different three-course meals uh, can patrons order? Well, what I need to do is I need to, uh, in three steps, choose my uh, three-course meal. I need to choose the appetizer, I need to choose the entree, and I need to choose the dessert. There are four appetizers, seven entrees, and three desserts. So the number of ways that I can do this is simply the product of these three numbers. Let's see here, four, uh, how do I wanna multiply that out? Uh, making things easy, seven times three, first of all. That sounds good, seven times three is 21. 21 times four is 84. So that gives us 84 possible three course meals. Excellent. So with this simple idea, I can already return back to seven brides uh, for seven brothers and determine how many possible matchings there are. Uh, so again, that's arranging the uh, brothers' names. So this is a little bit uh, a little bit more strange. I can't describe it as, you know, uh, appetizer, entree, dessert. Uh, but I have seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different uh, uh, choices to be made because I'm going to write 
someone's name down and then I'm going to write someone else's name down and then someone else's name. So at first there are seven different names that I could write down because there are seven brothers. After I've chosen one, I can uh, choose the next one, but there's only six to choose from. Then there's only five to choose from, then four, then three, then two, then one, right? I can't repeat brothers' names. Uh, they're only marrying one bride. So we have seven options and six and five and four, then three, then two, then one. And I multiply each of these numbers together to find this to be 5,040 ways that I could match the brides with the brothers. So we did that with just using the um, multiplication principle. Now there's a special notation when we have uh, seven times six times five times four times three times two times one. There's any integer times all of the positive integers below it. Uh, this is seven factorial. So for n in general, right? If I want to describe this in general, for n a positive integer, n factorial, that's what it's called, factorial, n factorial is n times n minus one times n minus two times all the way down to multiply by three times two times one. Now, if n is uh, three, then of course it's just three times two times one, uh, but whatever n happens to be. There's one additional uh, factorial that we define, right? We required a positive integer. Uh, so that's one, two, three, four, and so on. But we also define zero factorial to be one. Why? Because we define it to be, it is very convenient. So that's what we want, uh, essentially. So we have this factorial notation. All right. So that's all that I want to share for now. We'll take a look in one more video uh, about permutations. So I'll see you guys back in the workshop very shortly.